All right, today is the day that all of our hard work throughout this entire lesson is going to pay off, and we are going to create our argument as paleontologists deciding where exactly our mystery fossil is going to need to go. Um, so I hope you guys have really enjoyed this, and uh, just take your time while you're finishing up the lesson today to make sure that you are finishing strong. We've worked really hard over the last couple of chapters to make sure that we have learned everything we know. And today we're going to be examining some evidence to figure out where exactly, using all the information we've, we've um, obtained so far, all the scientific knowledge we know, all of our key concepts are going to come together today, and we're going to decide where we think we need to be putting that mystery fossil at the museum. So today is going to be uh, pretty challenging in terms of the amount of work you have to do. And there's gonna be a lot of times where I'm asking you to pause and spend some time reading and sorting some cards today for yourself. That being said, today's warm up is a little bit easier than usual. So if you haven't already, grab a piece of paper and a pencil so that you can start to jot down your thoughts. And we're gonna go ahead and fill out the warm up, which is gonna be similar to what you're gonna answer actually at the end of this uh, lesson today, but it's going to be with a much more well thought out response where you're gonna be including some evidence um, and some reasoning and staking a claim on where you think the fossil goes. So let's go ahead and read this email that we have gotten from our museum director. It says, the day is almost here. We are getting ready to open our new exhibits. The last piece of the puzzle is deciding where to place the mystery fossil in the museum, and that is where you come in. Today, you will carefully examine information about body structures in whales, wolves, and the mystery fossil. Using this evidence, you will decide where to place the mystery fossil in the museum with the whales or wolves. Remember, the exhibits in our museum are set up so that they are more closely related, uh, sorry, that the organisms that are more closely related are grouped together. We're excited to hear what, where you think the mystery fossil should be placed. So today for the warm up, all I'm going to really ask you to do is um, where do you think that mystery fossil is going to be placed in the museum? Do you think that it is most closely related to the whale, the wolf, or are you still kind of unsure? Um, it would also be kind of helpful if you go in and make sure you are saying uh, maybe a real quick reason why you think so, especially if you're unsure, really kind of explain yourself as to why you haven't started to make up your mind yet so that that can be something you think about as we continue throughout the rest of this lesson. All right, go ahead and pause now, answer this question, decide which one you think, and then we'll be moving on to activity two. All right, for activity two, on that piece of paper, using your pencil, uh, again, today is one of those days where I personally would really uh, encourage you to try and use a pencil. It's going to be something that's going to be a little bit easier for you um, because if you make a mistake, we're doing some sorting. You might change your mind as you're going. That's totally okay and it's a lot easier if you have a pencil. So let's write, draw out our table together here. Again, I always like to start by drawing my first horizontal line. Then I draw these two lines here. Just remember as you're going um, your table does not have to be perfect, but you do want to make sure that you have the similar structure. Also, there are a little bit, uh, there's a little bit more in terms of writing that you've got to do for today's headings up here. So if you are starting to feel like you are a little bit behind in writing these in, all these that I'm highlighting here, go ahead and just pause the video. Take a second to get caught up. You don't have to write everything out as fast as possible, but it is important that you're getting everything down. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Because this first table is gonna help us to really organize and dive into quite a few pieces of evidence that we're gonna be looking at today. So again, those three lines, one horizontal, two verticals, and then this column, we're gonna be looking at some cards and sorting them out, and you are going to be putting uh, cards and describing, um, for instance, you might write card A here, and that would mean that that card is an example of uh, only whales have that specific structure. So as yes, these cards are going to have some different structures on them. 
Second column is going to be for structures that you see that only wolves have. And then the last column, this is where you might accidentally, you know, have to go back and erase is that if you see a structure and you're like, oh, only whales have that, but then later you're going to maybe see a structure that shows that wolves had it, you're going to need to erase that from only whales and make sure that it's in uh, that final column that has both whales and wolves. So let's go ahead and we're going to clear this off so that we can move on to looking at our cards that you're going to be sorting. So what I want you to do is I am going to uh, go ahead and let you kind of pause the video, go through at whatever pace you want, and you're going to write down each of these. So for example, card A, backbone. That's going to be something, this is a whale here, so it's going to be something that you are either going to end up putting in the only whales, or if later on you see wolves have a backbone, you're going to be putting card A and writing card A into this category right here. So this activity, if we were doing it in a real classroom, would be a whole bunch of cards. You could sort them out, put them all out on your table, and kind of move them around. Unfortunately, because this is a video, we can't do that. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna slowly click through each of the cards. You take the time that you need on each of those cards and pause it. Don't worry about trying to rush through this. It's more about uh, making sure that you are getting all the thinking that you need in. And then once you have worked through sorting those cards, maybe you need to rewind. Any of that is fine during this uh, time. I want you to pretend like the visuals up on the screen are cards that you're sorting out and placing within this table right here. So let's go ahead. We're going to click through those so that you can take a second to sort those out. And we'll meet back up in a short second. All right, so at this point, what I wanna remind you of is if you do need to go back and look at those, I didn't give you a ton of time on each of them. So ideally, you were pausing on each of those and taking some time to figure out where you would place them into the table that we created uh, to go ahead and start today. So please feel free, go back right now and rewind to think through where those cards would be placed. Um, again, I just really want to stress that you doing the thinking and sorting these out is really going to support you in learning uh, enough so that we can, you can make a really strong argument at the end of this lesson today, which will wrap up our whole unit. So um, here is some of the things that I came up with. So structures that only whales have. So I put that whales have long jaws. They have teeth with the same shape, that sort of a cone shape, hopefully you noticed. 
and then I also noticed that they have nostrils on top of their skulls. Wolf structures that I noticed. Well, they have shorter jaws, some different sizes of their teeth. Their nostrils are actually on the front of their skulls. And then lastly, things that they have that are super similar, they both have backbones and then mammals, they're both mammals, so they both give live birth and they feed their offspring with milk. So if you didn't get these or maybe you got them in a different spot, now is a good time again to kind of pause the video and double check what you put. You may have thought about this a little bit differently and sorted some things in a different way and that's totally fine. Um, but this was the way that I thought it best uh, to, to sort these out. And as we go through today, we're gonna to be coming back to those cards and resorting them again in a couple different ways um, to organize our diagnostic structures, which is what we're gonna start next. And as a reminder, those diagnostic structures are going to be the structures uh, that the animals do not necessarily have exactly in common. Diagnostic structures are going to be things that help us to really identify differences, and those differences are going to be what determine which is more closely related to our mystery fossil. So take a second to think right now, what were the diagnostic structures that we identified? Another way of asking that question is, what structures do they not share? We're gonna do a little bit more thinking on it, so if you're not totally sure, um, some of the things that you may have noticed are those nostrils, kind of their teeth and their jaws, and then also one big thing is their hind legs or their rear limbs. Those are some of those key differences that we hopefully would have identified as diagnostic structures or those things that are differences. It's kind of hard because some of the times the difference is they both have nostrils, but their nostrils are located in different places. So as we move forward throughout the day, make sure you are realizing which of those things are our diagnostic structures so that we can really identify which one is more closely related to our mystery fossil. All right, here we go. I kind of warned you in the beginning when I said that the warm up was short, but some of the other things that we're going to be doing today are a little bit longer. Um, but we're going to be moving into drawing a second table here uh, to organize some of the similarities and differences now comparing with our mystery fossil. So go ahead, same sort of setup as the one below. You can go ahead and put this right below whatever thinking you had less. Maybe it was the ideas of the diagnostic structures that you were taking some notes on. Uh, maybe this is right below your other table and that is totally fine as well. So these are the lines we wanna have to set up. And then same thing, these head on, head, headings, excuse me, are a little bit longer, but take some time to go ahead and write these into those top boxes. We're going to be looking for, first and foremost, we're gonna be looking at the whales and then thinking about what are the, the structures that are shared with the mystery fossil. We're gonna to wanna to start to think a little bit more specifically about what we're thinking and a little bit less generally um, as we start to go through this unit. Second, Second part here is wolves and the mystery fossil share the structure. And then the last column is for what are the things that all three of these different species share? What are structures that they all are gonna share? So if you didn't get a chance to fill this out completely, that's totally okay. Um, I got a little bit lucky because I didn't have to write out all of my headings. You may take, uh, need to take another minute or two to do that. So pause the video and then we're going to move into thinking about those similarities and differences. The first thing that you can use to think through some of the similarities and differences are just by looking at these general uh, fossils and looking at some of the different structures on the whole. So feel free, again, this is gonna be a time where I'm gonna click through those slides. You're gonna have the time to pause and think you may want to really come back to this slide to dial in what does your mystery fossil look like. And feel free to, if you notice you made a mistake, 
uh, rewind, erase, do whatever you need to do to make sure you are taking your time. Because again, if we were in a classroom, we would have these and we could sort them all out on our table, but it's a little bit tougher to do this through the video. So don't feel bad if you're having to go back and watch this one or maybe two or three times. So let's go ahead and I will get those slides ready for you. Now we are comparing our mystery fossil and trying to find what it has in common with both our whale, what the mystery fossil has in common with our wolf, and um, then what does the mystery fossil have in common with the whale and the wolf that all three of them share? Not just those things that are unique to the whale that match the mystery fossil and the things that are unique to the wolf that match the mystery fossil. All right, so hopefully you were able to use those cards to sort out some of the things that you thought the whales and the mystery fossil shared, some of the things that the wolves and the mystery fossil shared, and then some of the things that they all had in, in common. Here are how I sorted my cards, and we're gonna be using this thinking to go a little bit deeper. So if you notice, our mystery fossil had nostrils, teeth, and a skull. Those were all things that the whale had, okay? Uh, card H, G, and F, these are all things that the wolves and the mystery fossil also had in common. And then the things that they all had in common that were super unique were that they gave live birth and milk and uh, that they had a backbone. Sorry, I said that was super unique, but these are things that they all actually share, so more of a common trait. So now what we're going to do is we're going to look a little bit more specifically at these unique structures. These are our diagnostic structures that we're going to be looking at to really explain what exactly do, do the nostrils look like on those two different animals and which one is most closely similar to our mystery fossil. So over these next few slides, I want you to start to think about that for yourself. I've got each of those different diagnostic structures now pulled out and you're gonna do a similar card sort. So you're noticing now that the background is green. So I've got both of the skulls next to each other. You're gonna to wanna to use some time to kind of think about what's similar, what's different between these skulls. And then as you go through, when you get to the end, uh, we'll look at the teeth. Almost there. We'll look at the nostrils. And then here is that mystery fossil. So you may want to take a look. I labeled the nostrils of the mystery fossil because it's a little bit tricky to know in here. Um, but the teeth are obviously the teeth right here. Um, and then the skull shape is right here. So I'm gonna go back, take a second to kind of look at this mystery fossil. And then as you go through, you can scroll, but really our idea here is since these are our diagnostic structures, we want to be deciding which of these structures are most closely aligned with either a whale or a wolf, because out of these three things, that's going to tell us which is the most uh, close, closely related organism. So I'm going to go ahead and go back. You can pause as you go through each of these. 
And at the end, you're gonna wanna hopefully have, start to think in your head, an idea of which exactly is this mystery fossil most related to. And by doing that, hopefully you have created and pulled some evidence from these slides to be able to explain that in an argument. We don't just wanna say what we think the answer is, we've gotta be able to prove it with some evidence. So use these green slides to uh, figure out some evidence, and then you can always go back to that mystery fossil at the end, take your time kind of scrolling through these like we did with the other ones. Okay, so now is the moment where you are going to need to stake your claim. This is gonna be something that you're going to want to sketch out onto your piece of paper and decide where do you think this mystery fossil's relatives belong? We're gonna be placing the orca whale, which is going to obviously be representing the whale, and then the wolf. So think to yourself, if you started to think based on those diagnostic structures that the whale was more related to the mystery fossil, think about which of those places it would go and then where would the gray wolf go? And of course, if you're thinking that the wolf is more related, think about where that would go as well. Remember, our, one of our key concepts is that um, the, the organism that is the most closely related to our uh, fossil is going to be closest to it in our evolutionary tree. So take a second to pause and sketch this out. It might take you a little bit of time because there is a lot of lines here. I'm not gonna stop and um, trace the lines for you because I think you can do it. You're just gonna wanna make sure that you decide these two right up here, orca whale or gray wolf, you're gonna put one of them into this box here one into this box here. Based on what you think, the one that is the most closely related should be going here for following our key concept of the closest relative is going to be um, nearest it on the evolutionary tree. So go ahead, take a second and pause. It might take you a little while, that's okay. And then we'll come back up to wrap up your full writing that you're gonna be using uh, to finish up this unit. Okay, so now is the time. Here is our chapter three question. This is the big question that we've been leading up to for the entire unit. Uh, we're gonna be placing the fossil out there in the museum and we need to know where we place it so that the guests in the museum aren't confused by seeing something that is in the incorrect place. Plus that could blow up into a pretty embarrassing story for the museum if some uh, student paleontologist maybe noticed that they had placed it in the wrong place. So. This is a question that I'm gonna be challenging you to answer, and it's gonna be a little bit more of a lengthy response than some of the other writing pieces that we've done throughout the unit. And you're gonna be answering the question, how can we tell if the mystery fossil is more related to the wolves and the whales? And most specifically, you're gonna be staking a claim that says which one you think it is most closely related to. So, we already eliminated this claim three a long time ago, so I'm not gonna get into that too much. But to start off your writing today, you're probably going to want to decide which of these two claims do you think are most, uh, is most correct. 
Um, if you are still struggling, I would suggest that you go back in the video and look at those green colored, the slides with the green colored backgrounds. Those are where we looked at those diagnostic structures of our mystery fossil, our whale, and our wolf to see which of those structures had more similarities uh, within it. So to finish up today, you're gonna to wanna to answer that question. And what I have put here for you, you're gonna notice that I will click through some slides that you can use for your writing. The beginning slides are gonna be some key concepts. These may help you to kind of explain your thinking and get started before you stake your claim. Uh, I will click back through these, so don't worry, I'm gonna click through them a little bit quicker this time, because I wanna show you. Uh, I said you could go back and look at the green slides, but I've also got these blue slides here that will show you those diagnostic structures again. So you can start too, if you wanted to use uh, the nostril here or the skull shape, or that this also does a pretty good job of showing the teeth, you can start to use this and bring it in as your evidence. And we've got that for all of those different diagnostic structures that we identified. So I'll go back to the beginning and click through these slowly so that you can go ahead and stake your claim and say which of these two animals, the whale or the wolf, is the mystery fossil most closely related to. Um, I hope you guys have had a lot of fun working through this unit. I really have had a lot of fun making it. It's been super fun to teach. I wish I could be there with more of you helping you because I know some of the times it's not as easy as we might want, especially today was a great example when we've got those cards and we're trying to sort them out. But I really appreciate everyone's perseverance and your, your drive to work hard independently to help you get this through this and to become a better scientist. So um, congratulations for finishing this unit. Make sure you finish strong as always by making a really strong piece of writing uh, for your teacher to read. And I'll look forward to seeing you later. Thanks, bye.